suppose ultimately I made the decision so that I didn't have any threat of getting ovarian or breast cancer and um, letting my children see what I saw my grandma and her mum go through. So ultimately it was to protect my family. And as I understand it, you carry a faulty gene, uh, like Angelina Jolie carries a faulty gene, hers uh, the BRCA1, yours as I understand it is the BRCA2. How did you discover that you carried that gene? Well, my dad's mum had passed away and uh, just before she passed away, they did genetic screening on her. It was just a new thing and they were discovering that ovarian and breast cancer was due, due to a genetic fault and she came back positive as um, BRCA2. My dad received an automatic letter, as did his two sisters, to say did they want to be tested, that there was a possibility they carried it. He then had the test, he was positive and then I got the letter. How did it feel to get that letter? I remember putting it in a drawer closing the drawer and pretending it wasn't about me. It was a really weird situation to have a black and white um, emotive um, piece of paper that was telling me that my life could literally change overnight. Um, so I, I tried not to think about it. For about a year it went past and it wasn't until that I had my daughter Faith that I then realised that she had the potential of having the gene as well and unless I got tested genetic testing wouldn't be available for her you have to have a direct link so even though there was a risk of her having it she may never know unless I got tested so that was that was the real reason why I originally got tested and when you did get the results of that test and you discovered that you did carry this gene what were you told about the increased chances of you developing breast and ovarian cancer the initial moment when I got told um, that next hour was, to be honest, a little bit of a blur. Um, I had not anticipated having the gene. I think, um, quite foolishly, I thought that I would be fine and I felt fit and healthy and me and my husband were under the impression there's nothing wrong with me. How could I be, you know, have something so faulty if I felt fine? And obviously that's not the case at all. Uh, you don't need to feel unwell to carry these. Um, so for that hour, I, I tried to digest the information, but it wasn't really going in there. So I had to go back a couple of times and see counsellors and until I fully understood the extent of what the gene meant, um, which I suppose ultimately meant I had up to an 80-85% risk of breast cancer and uh, for BRCA2 it's a 30-40% to 40 risk of ovarian cancer. And you made the decision to have a double mastectomy in 2012. Uh, you went ahead and had a hysterectomy last year as well. How tough a decision was it to undergo such surgery as that? You know, the, the mastectomy was um, in a lot easier to, to make a decision on because I, I was kind of like, they're just boobs and, you know, my husband's happy, I'm in a loving relationship um, and I didn't feel that I was that attached to them anyway and it was just a little bit of an easier decision and I was like, it's a no-brainer to have an 85% risk of breast cancer uh, was too great a deal to, to risk so I had that pretty much straight away or as soon as I could. Um, with the hysterectomy it was a different story. We were not going to have it that soon. We were going to wait a little while, um, but I fell pregnant with AJ, who's obviously amazing, and we kind of took it as a sign to move on with things. We always said that after I have my second child that we would look into having the operation. The second child came along a little bit quicker than we had anticipated, so we just moved things along. Angelina Jolie, in her article where she's explained the procedure she's gone through, has said there's more than one way to deal with any health issue. And it is true to say that a, a positive test for, for the BRCA gene doesn't necessarily mean the surgery that you've undertaken, does it? Oh, I'm not, absolutely, definitely. I mean, it, it, they're two major evasive operations. It was not taken lightly. Um, there was a lot of recovery. Um, you know, I am now in... Um, early menopause, I have very hormonal imbalances, I'm going through 
a lot of challenges every day. Um, so it's not an easy decision by any means. Um, but for me, I felt that it was um, my only choice because I didn't want to live my life wondering every day if that little niggle was ovarian cancer. Um, seeing my grandma go through it was, is, I think, enough for me to not ever want to go through it. Well, Michelle Heaton, we really appreciate your time and sharing your story with us. Thanks very much indeed. No, thank you for having me. Thank you.